Hello, this is the next video in the series on testing strategies for the ACS Organic Chemistry Final. But that, so this one's going to be talking about obviously structure, hybridization, and aromaticity. But that, so um, we're talking about things like um, determining, a, you know, if it's sp2, sp3, uh, formal charge, Lewis structures, things like that. But that so the first step, we're looking at the lowest energy uh, Lewis structure for this for this molecule. Okay, so in order for it to be the lowest energy, a couple things you're going to want to look for. If you can minimize the amount of formal charges um, that the molecule has, okay, so um, I'm going to try to do that as much as possible, as well as um, making sure everything, ha everybody has their octet filled. Okay? So if we're in, um, so if we look at this one here, right, so methyl, it's, it's going to have its octet filled. Um, nitrogen has it, right? Right, two, four, six, eight. Carbon does two, four, six, eight. Um, oxygen two four six. Okay, so so this one does not have its octet filled, so it's not going to be it. So we can cross that one off, right? So um, look at this: methyl's fine, nitrogen's fine with the four bonds, carbon's fine with its four bonds. Again, this one only has two four six on it, so um, that's not going to work. Okay, so for here, again, octet filled, 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 and then here it is filled. So that so, as well as here, right? Um, each of these has um, eight electrons around them. So then we're going to deal with, so that's going to be at least the easiest part. Um, so now we're just down to these two, so coin slips chance. So then it's going to be, you're going to want to look at formal charge. Okay, so remember formal charge for the way that I do it, um, you look at the, um, the valence electrons it has at the beginning, right? So, that, so uh, on the periodic table, so valence um, electrons it has minus um, electrons now. Okay, and then for this one, right, you're, we're going to split the bonds, right, like that. Okay, and these electrons, these, so in this case, these electrons would go over here. Um, these electrons would go over here, and the oxygen in this case would um, retain the, the lone pair. The lone pair just stays with the atoms. So for here, right, so for that the oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, right? So it would be. Um, oxygen has six valence electrons, but now it has five, right? So it'd be a plus one. And this nitrogen, right? If we slice these atoms, right? Um, nitrogen starts off with five valence electrons, right? Now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, minus six. So it has a, oh, excuse me, a minus one charge on it. So we have a plus one and a minus one. So for here, right, the, uh, the nitrogen, right? So it starts off with five on the, on the periodic table. Now it's got one, two, three, four, five, right? So now it's five, so, so that's zero. Same goes with this one, right? Slice the bond, right? So uh, two, four, six, right? So six minus six equals zero. So then there's no formal charges on here, which is gonna make it more stable. So this right here is gonna be the, the more stable of the two. But if you just look at, at what has our tet and what doesn't filled, we, we were able to at least get rid of these two. Um, and then you can just start looking at, at formal charge. So, next up, again, we'll be looking at formal charge. And so the way that I do it, it's the, uh, um, it's the valence electrons uh, minus electrons now. Okay. And so for here, right, we'll be looking at that, that phosphorus. So, with that. so again, we're going to be slicing these electrons here. So, so this one, right, phosphorus has five valence electrons, right? So with that, so in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Minus six, so it'd be a, um, so it'd be minus one, right? Here, right, for this one, one, two, three, four, five, right? So it'd be five minus five, it'd be, um, it'd be zero. And then here, right, so you have one, two, three, four, right? As we s slice the, uh, slice the, uh, uh, slice the bonds, right? So that would be five minus four, and it'd be a plus one. Okay. This one would actually have even it's kind of an odd one anyway, but it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'd be a, a, a minus two. So with that, so so here we go. So for formal charge, that's where you um, you are going to slice the at um, the bonds apart and and split the atoms. So. Now for hybridization. What I typically do is it's, um, I usually say lone pair sets. I talk about sets um, plus the uh, um, bond sets, 
Okay, so so a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond are all going to be um, one set. Okay, so like that. So that that's going to tell you how many letters you need uh, for your hybridization, right? So for this one, it says what is the hybridization of the orbital containing the unpaired shared electrons? Really, all it's saying is it's a really crazy way to say, hey, what's the hybridization of that phosphorus? Okay, so we're going to do lone pair sets. In this case, it's it's one lone pair set. Um, and then it's one, two, th three, three bond sets, right? So we're going to need four letters, right? So it's going to be S, P, 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 right? S, P, three, okay? So if we were going to look at, say, that, so, so the answer would be obviously be this. Um, if we were going to look at that one, right? Or, I'm sorry, not that one. This one, so like that's right? Don't forget that there's a hydrogen, right? So like that, so it would be one, two, um, one, two, three. Right, so, that, so, so this counts as a set, right? So this would be an SB2. Not too bad, right? So, but the, uh, the lone pair is just going to be going into a hybridized orbital. So really all you need to do is figure out the hybridization on that particular atom. Now for this one, the hybridization, uh, where we've got a list of these, the first thing you're going to want to do is draw on those hydrogens. If you don't draw on those hydrogens, you're going to forget them. Right, so, so here there's three three bonds shown, so there's a hydrogen here. Okay, and here there is um, again three three bonds shown, so there's a hydrogen sticking off of here. Okay, but we may not necessarily have to um, solve all three of them, um, but that but we have to the um, but yeah we may be able to get the answer from just say two. Okay, so the uh, so for this one for A right we have one, two three bond sets, right? No lone pairs. Okay, so we need three letters, right? So it's SPP, right? So it's SP2. So A, so we can get rid of this one and this one. Okay, because it would have to be SP2. Here, again, it's going to be one bond set, right? Plus two lone pair sets. Right? So it's three. So again, it's going to be SPP, right? So it's SP, um, SP2. Okay, so, oh, they're both SP2. Okay, so that doesn't help us. Um, and then for here, right, so, with that, so here it's one, two, three, four, four, right, so it'd be SPPP, four letters, right, so it's SP3. So here we go, so, so it's going to be C, because that one's, that one's off. I guess we could have looked at it and seen that. Um, we could have skipped the B, um, so with that. But one thing that, that gets thrown in these, because it's a really weird exception, is if you can do a resonant structure. And the classic one is, let's say you have um, an amide, okay, where you have this, and they say, okay, what's the hybridization on that um, on that nitrogen? It, they they love throwing these on the test. You have to be cognizant of the fact that, or at least be aware that you can do this resonant structure here to get it into get it to look like this. Right, so it's a negative and a positive charge. Because it can do this resonance structure, this nitrogen is considered sp2, right? Because it has three bond sets. So you look at this and say, "Oh, hey, it's the uh, um, you know it's got three bonds and a lone pair. It must be sp3." Well, because of this resonance structure, it's bouncing between these two. It's considered sp2. So be aware of, of Whatever you whatever you have, particularly if you have lone pairs and you got a double bond next to it, you know, be aware that you you have to take into account resonance, okay? stuff like that. So they love throwing that one on on tests. Okay, so for heats of combustion, okay, so for that, so what ends up happening is is the um, the less um, the more stable the molecule the less um, heat it's going to give off, okay? So I usually think about it, about the stuff they put in bombs, okay? So for that, so in order to give off a lot of heat, the molecule itself have to be very unstable, okay? So lots of heat, lots of really unstable. So if you're looking at the least stable, okay, you're going to have, you, what you're going to be looking for is, is the most heat, okay? They're all 48, right? But 35, 42, 39, 40, Right, so this one here gives off the most heat of combustion, so that so that must be the least stable. Okay, 
So that's usually what I think about. Okay, so which was um, which pair of molecules consists of resonance structure? Now, the, the important thing for this is that remember it's only electrons that are moving, so you can't move atoms around. Something like that. So if you're moving any atoms around, you can automatically get rid of it. Okay, so for here, right? Notice how it goes from oxygen, oxygen to OH. Well, obviously a hydrogen moves, so it can't be this one. Uh, for this one here, right? So let's say now we can get. Um, Right, so if we draw on the hydrogens, right, the carbon has a has a positive charge, so that means it only has three bonds. Okay, so going from here, but this one, right, no charge, so it must have four. Right here, the now it must only have three, and this must be the a CH3. So you would have gotten, say, a hydride shift. So that's not a, a resonance structure. Again, a hydrogen is moving, can't do that. So for here, right, it's just a um, it's just kind of an isomer, and, or even just the same molecule. It's just flipped over, so that's not a resonance structure. No electrons really moved around, so so that can't be it. So it must be this. So even if you don't even know, even if you're not sure, you know it's not this, this, or this. Okay. So and actually, I mean, obviously it has. Uh, it is the resonance structure because right, that's fallen down there, that's gone there, and that's gone there. So like that. So. So e even if you don't want to do the resonance structure, you can figure out what it's not. So like that. Okay. So so last up. So for that. So looking at, at aromaticity. Okay. So one, it has to be a ring. If it's a, if it's a straight if it's a straight chain, not going to be it, you know non aromatic. So it has to be at least a ring. And the, all the atoms in the uh, um, with some exceptions, notable exceptions, um, they need they need to have satisfy at least one of these um, criteria. They have to be part of a pi, um, have a pi bond on them. So like a carbon-carbon a double bond or a carbon-oxygen double bond or a carbon triple bond, whatever. Um, they need, or they need some sort of charge or they need to have a lone pair. Now the exception to this one is the um, isn't like NH4 or something like that. A, a quaternary um, a quaternary amine so that, that's going to have a charge, but it's sp3 hybrid, so um, the, it, it doesn't work. So, like that. so as long as it satisfies these, and all of the ones around the ring are um, can, so like that, so the uh, then we'll be okay. If it doesn't, then it's automatically non-aromatic. Okay. If it does, if everything satisfies this, then we have to do this aromatic versus anti-aromatic and we're just going to look at the, the number of actual electrons around there and so um, you can do this little chart and I can't remember the name but I can I can make the chart really quickly because we know that benzene is the classic aromatic okay so so obviously benzene's like this right so you count the electrons well you know that's aromatic and so it's two four six um, so that pi electrons, right? So, so you know it's six, and then I know that it bounces back and forth, right? So it goes eight, right? Ten, the uh, um, was it twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and so on and so forth. Um, it also goes this way too. So four and two, okay. So the other way that I've heard you can do this is it's like one pair, three pairs, five pairs, seven pairs. So it's an odd number of pairs. This one it's an even number of pairs. So two pairs. Four pairs, six pairs, eight pairs. You can do it either way, or I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. I just like drawing draw the chart really quickly, um, something like that. So, so it has to have the ring has to have this many um, electrons in it. Okay. So the uh, um, so for this one here, right? So for that, so so these two carbons have a um, have a um, part of a pi bond. This carbon has a charge. Okay. So this one here, right? So it has two, right? Um, which would be make it aromatic. So that one is right. So we're looking for which ones are aromatic. So for this one here, right? So you look around, right? These two, these two, and these two. Um, those are all part of a pi. Um, all have um, the uh, pi bonds associated with them, right? And this one has a charge. So it's going to be right two, um, two, 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 right? And this is basically zero. If this was a lone pair, you you have to actually count it if it's a uh, um, if it's on a carbon, you got to count that lone pair. But we'll talk about heteroatoms over here in a, in a minute. The uh, um, so for that, so here we got two, four, six, zero. Okay, um, so this would be six, right? Which is obviously like benzene. So this is aromatic. Okay, 
Okay? Now, these two, these two, and these two are part of double bonds, but this carbon right here is just a normal old CH2. Okay, it doesn't have a pi bond, does not have charge, no lone pairs, sorry, um, stuff like that. And so this one is actually, because it can't go all the way around the ring, it stops there. This is actually non-aromatic. Okay. Now for this one here, right, you'd say, oh, well, you know, there's two, four, six, eight, and, you know, so it's anti-aromatic. Well, the, uh, that's actually not how it works. So if you have an sp3 hybridized um, heteroatom with um, lone pairs, what it's going to do is it's going to move. Um, it's going to move so that probably one of those pair of electrons are going to get in there, and it's going to stick this other one sort of 90 degrees, so it's sort of hidden. So we don't count that one, and so really it's just two, four, six, and so it, so this one is also aromatic. Okay, so heteroatoms generally want to try to figure out how to make themselves aromatic. Now, the exception of when you when you do or when you don't is if I've seen this example, this it's pretty obscure. Okay, so this one would typically want to, to put this um, the uh, this nitrogen would want to get the um, it's the uh, lone pair into the system in order to be able to, to become six. But the problem is when it's sp two. It, it can't. So an sp3 has that flexibility of moving things in and out. The, the sp2 is locked, okay? And so remember, this thing is, is trigonal planar, and so it's sticking out 90 degrees. It's in this plane, and so remember, all of these p electrons are like this. This one's sticking, sticking out like this at 90 degrees, so it can't add it. It's stuck. So you have to sort of be careful. So in this case, one, two, and four would be aromatic. This one would be anti anti-aromatic. If you had, um, say, this one right here, but you had a negative, oop, you had a negative charge like that. Now here, you have to count them if they're on a carbon, right? So here would be two, two. So there should be four, and so this would be a, a case of an anti, just like this one. So in this case, one, two, four. So the answer would be this one. Okay, good luck.